example of graphing an ellipse. Um, and I want to incorporate the vocabulary and the focal points into this too. Okay, so um, we've got an equation here for an ellipse. It is um, centered at negative 3, 1. Uh, so I pulled that from the numbers that are being added and subtracted from x and y respectively, um, noting that it's the center is, is in the opposite direction that the points seem to elude to. So x plus 3 actually means left 3, and y minus 1 means up 1. Okay, so I'm going to grab my line tool and try to actually figure out where the heck these lines are on this graph. It's terrible, I know. Um, okay, so I think this should be above... somewhere there and I think the other one should be to the right of those numbers that are completely impossible to read oh shoot I missed that a little bit that's okay though all right good enough um we're counting by ones I'm pretty sure I think that's going to be fine so let's go ahead and plot that center, <clears throat> left three and up one right there. Perfect. Okay, um, let's plot the vertices next. I'll use, I'll use red for the vertices actually. A little more dominant of a color for something that's more dominant. The vertices are gonna be more dominant, so to speak, than the co-vertices, or at least I think of them that way. The vertices lie on the bigger axis um, the focal points are always on that major axis as well. Um, something I did not mention above about focal points that I, I will emphasize now. Um, focal points are always with the vertices. The co-vertices are loners. They're, they're by themselves. Focal points and vertices are good friends. I'll explain more in a minute. Um, so looking at this equation, how can I tell... Um, which direction the vertices will be in. Are they going to be left and right? Meaning with X, left or right? Or are they going to be up and down with Y? Well, where are the vertices? Which Access do they live on the major or the minor? If you're thinking major, you listened well in the last video. The vertices are going to come from here, the co vertices are going to come from there. And I'm going to use a different color for that one. I'll, I'll label that when I get to it. So I wrote down A equals three because the letter A is connected to the vertices, it's connected to the major axis. This is what's going to help me out. So the square root of nine is three. Um, that means that I'm going to move three to the right. I'll put a dot there and three to the left. One, two, three, I'll put a dot there. And there you go. There is my major Access those red points are my vertices. So I have one point over zero up one and another point over six up one. They're both three away from my center. So left three and right three from the center. Okay. The co vertices will come from B, which is always going to be smaller than A, right? A is on the major axis, which is by definition bigger. B is on the minor axis, which is smaller. So uh, these are underneath Y, so that's obviously up and down. So we have up two and down two from the center. Those points will be over three, and let's see, we're two higher than one, so three. And we're two lower than one, so negative one. Excellent. All right. So that's enough information here to actually sketch my graph.
Um, try to do your best to make sure that the graphs round out at the points. That's the trick to making them look nice. Don't attack the point like straight on because then it'll look like it has sharp corners and we don't want that. Okay, so now the last part we have to, to contend with here are the vertices or the focal points, the foci. Um, the foci always live on the major axis. So I'm going to go ahead and, and draw a line actually to illustrate this. I'm going to make it a, um, I'll make it this off green color. Or maybe I should make it red because it's on the major axis and I used red points for that. So this axis right here, this red line is the major axis. The focal points are always on the major. They're always on the longer axes of the ellipse. Okay, so I'm going to use purple for this. Um, purple. Where along this line are those two focal points going to be? Well, we would need some sort of consistent method of doing that. You can't just randomly guess because then that they're locked in just like every other point. So I'm going to use my formula a squared minus b squared equals c squared to figure this out. Um, so a squared, my a value was three and my b value was two. I got those from the equation and I wrote them up here, right? A and b into. Um, we're squaring them so we actually get directly back to what we had um, in the original equation of this ellipse. And we get the square root of 5. Now this isn't a nice value and that kind of makes sense because rarely are those focal points going to lie perfectly on a nice tick mark on our grid. So this is totally fine. Um, technically actually it's plus and minus. Um, but all that means here is that we are going to travel the square root of five, which is like a little more than uh, a little more than two. The square root of four is two, so a little more than oops two to the left and to the right of my center. So one two and a little more. There's one of them. One two and a little more. And there is another one of them. <clears throat> Those are my focal points. They're on the major axis, and they're somewhere near the vertices. They obviously need to be <laughs> short, uh, closer to the center than the vertices are because they're somewhere on that axis line specifically. And notice those green points, those co-vertices. Those poor co-vertices have no friends. They're loners. They're all by themselves. Vertices and focal points are best friends. They hang out all the time. So there you go, personification to help, maybe to help you remember. Um, I'll use the letter F and then I'll use the letter C. So there's everything labeled quite nicely. Um, how do I list those points? I have a lot of students that like using a calculator to do this kind of stuff, but I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, and in fact, you won't be allowed to on our test. So here's what you would do. Um, you would take your center, <clears throat> which is at negative 3, comma 1, and you would just mathematically say, hey, I'm moving left of this point, this blue negative 3, comma 1 point, and I'm moving right of that point, a distance of root 5. And those, those answers are going to be your points. So what I mean by that is um, we're starting at negative three and we're going to move right root five. That's like adding root five. Uh, and then we're still at a height of one. So it's comma one, right? I'm not going to type that into my calculator. I'm going to just leave it like that. Um, I know it's somewhere close to zero because that's why I plotted that dot on my graph, but it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, and then our other point would be the left square root of five is a distance. So adding and subtracting to that uh, x component of our point is going to get us our answers. So there you have it. We've discovered, we found the coordinates for the center, the vertices, the co-vertices, and the focal points. We reviewed this vocab extensively in this video. We talked about the relationship between the focal points and the vertices and co-vertices with that formula in purple there. 
and we labeled a graph very, very, very nicely. Um, I'm happy with this. This is great. One more video to go.